Thank you for joining us at this time. It is 12 o'clock and this is News Analysis coming to you on politics and business television. The top stories. Ogun Free Trade Zone due. Chinese firm targets Nigeria assets in eight countries. Government announces two-day diversion on Lagos Road. Nigeria Labour Congress alleges interference in tenure of union leaders. Details coming up shortly. Welcome back. Zhengshan Fengshan Industrial Investment Co Limited, the Chinese firm that got a court injunction to ground three presidential jets belonging to the federal government in Europe, has initiated plans to seize other Nigerian assets in the United Kingdom, United States of America, and in six other countries. It is also gathered that the company has instituted legal proceedings in about eight jurisdictions globally regarding the disputes. The other countries include Belgium, Canada, France, Singapore and the British Virgin Islands. Documents relating to the case which were obtained by journalists were revealed on Thursday. This comes as the federal government vows to protect its foreign assets from predators. In 2001, China and Nigeria signed a bilateral investment treaty aimed at promoting commercial investments between the two countries. In 2007, Ogun State reportedly entered into a joint venture agreement with a Chinese company and another company to create the Ogun Gunjan Free Trade Zone Company. The Nigeria Export Processing Zones Authority, a federal government entity that oversees free trade zones in Nigeria, then delegated control and operation of the free trade zone to the company. In the first half of 2016, however, the agreement between both parties was terminated, leading to Zhengshan filing lawsuits, filing lawsuits in Nigerian federal and state courts seeking reinstatement of its contractual rights. But the legal proceedings were discontinued in spring 2018. Meanwhile, a court document has revealed that the Chinese company was demanding compensation of $130.6 million due to a breach of contracts by reneging on terms between both parties to create the Ogun Ganjan Free Trade Zone. Reacting, the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Latif Fadbemi, SAN, said his office and that of the National Security Advisor have commenced legal and diplomatic moves to recover the three presidential aircraft seized by the Chinese firm. The Lagos State Government has announced plans to divert traffic at the Ikeja along bus stop between Ilezik and Konoya filling station on the Oshodi bound lane of the Lagos Apiokuta Expressway. According to the announcement, the diversion would be for two days from Saturday, August 17, 2024 to Sunday, August 18, 2024 between 12 midnight and 4 a.m. daily. The diversion was meant to allow workers to safely demolish the old pedestrian bridge in the area. This was disclosed on Thursday with far the ex handle of the state. Ministry of Transportation, the statement also the statement also stated that the only lane would be available to motorists from Ilezik bus stop up to Cornell filling station on the Osho bound of the road. Oshiemi advised motorists to be patient as the closure is part of the traffic management plans for the removal of the old pedestrian bridge safely by the Lagos Metropolitan Area Transport Authority, adding that the lanes will be cut cordoned off with jersey barriers and protective nets to keep motorists and commuters safe during the period of the demolition. And now the Nigeria Labour Congress has called on the federal government not to take steps to interfere in the tenure of union leaders in the country. Mr. Benson Upa, NLC Head of Information, made the call while addressing newsmen on Thursday in Abuja. Upa alleged that the government wanted to impose a two-year tenure on Labour leaders. 
He says such action would amount to meddling in the internal running of trade unions and a gross violation of the corpus of labor law and international labor organization conventions. He also appealed to the government to stop meddling in the affairs of Labour Party and as well in the stabilisation campaign against opposition parties, stating that the police must send their unreserved apology to the NLC for the invasion of its headquarters or risk an industrial action or other options open to Congress to express its dissatisfaction. According to him, the explanations by the police for the invasion have consistently failed to add up, including the purported legal documents from a court of jurisdiction permitting the raid. He therefore called on the federal government and the police not to rob Congress into something it knew nothing about. Also on the protest, OPA urged the federal government to desist from playing on the intelligence of Nigerians by attempting to divert their attention from the real issues of bad governance and hunger which will which still stare the people in the face reiterating that it was economic policies of the government that have continued to unleash hardship on the people the congress called on the government to release those in its custody in relation to the protests including a member of the nigerian union electricity employees executive mr opalua eliojo who was arrested at a social spot in abuja You're watching news analysis live on politics and business television. Still to come, federal government has turned Nigerians into beggars through palliatives, says Afe Babalola. Details of this and more after the break. Welcome back. Founder of Afe Babalola University, Ado Ekiti Are, Are Afe Babalola, yesterday took a swipe at the federal government over the distribution of palliatives, describing it as an attempt to turn Nigerians to beggars and leading them to poverty. He also threw his words behind the Patriots' call for a new constitution. Babalola made this known when the Prestige Sisters League came on a thank you visit to him at the Abroad campus. Speaking on the recent protests across the country, he said that those protesting against hunger do so because everyone knows there is hunger in the country. On the Patriots' call for a new constitution, he said Nigeria does not have to go through any constitutional conference, but the parliament should re enact the 1963 constitution. And now to the federal government. The federal government has announced a set of reforms aimed at strengthening the regulation of healthcare facilities across Nigeria. Dr. Tunji Alausa, Minister of State for Health and Social Welfare, disclosed this on Thursday in Abuja at the inauguration of medical laboratory regulation and inspection against quackery in Nigeria. Alausa said that the move came in response to growing concerns over over unregulated and substandard healthcare services that had plagued the country's health sector, emphasizing on the importance of ensuring that all healthcare facilities, particularly laboratories, adhere to stringent standards. The minister highlighted recent revelations about illegal kidney harvesting rings operating in Abuja and other parts of the country, underscoring the urgent need for comprehensive oversight. He revealed that while doctors involved in the kidney harvesting scandal had been sanctioned, the implicated hospital remained operational due to, to address to address this grab, the minister announced plans to establish a national health facility regulatory agency which would be taxed with monitoring and regulating all healthcare institutions in the country, calling for collaboration across governments across government agencies to support enforcement of the regulations. Still, you are watching news analysis live on politics and business television. We will be going on a short break and when we're back, we shall be discussing the drop in inflation and if there's any, any impact and if it has any impact on the economy. Stay tuned.
Welcome back. Nigeria's headline inflation rates fell in July for the first time in well over a year, dipping to 33.40% in annual terms from 34.19% in June, according to data from the National Bureau of Statistics. Analysts have said June's reading could mark the peak in inflation as currency devaluation effect starts to fade. July's slowdown will bring some relief to frustrated Nigerians who protested this month over cost of living pressures and bad governance. Price pressures have been stalked by President Palatinobu's decision to remove a decade-old decade fuel subsidy, devalue the Naira currency and hike electricity tariffs. The reforms are aimed at lifting economic growth and shoring up public finances, but have, spent, have sent inflation soaring, eroding people's income and purchasing power. Dr. Ashaik Alhaji Maidugu, MNI lecturer, Department of, Economic, uh, Department of Economics, based University of Abuja, will be taking us through our today's topic in a moment. See you shortly. Welcome back. With me, I have Dr. Ashaik Maidugu, MNI, a lecturer of economics at the University of Yambez University, Abuja. Good morning to you, sir. Good afternoon to you, sir. Good, good afternoon. Happy to be with you. Thank you, sir. So my first question for you today is, what direct impact does the job in inflation have on the Nigerian economy? Well, thank you for this question. Uh, inflation as an economic phenomena has been in the front burner in this country. Uh, over recent, we have seen increases in inflation, especially the headline inflation, uh, which has been on the increase. Uh, available statistics released by the National Bureau of Statistics actually revealed that uh, there is an increasing trajectory in inflation. Uh, and it's a general increase in prices and it affects uh, general price level. So it's not restricted to one or two items, but is persistent general price increase. And uh, uh, so it has effect on the Nigerian economy uh, in that inflation actually reduces the purchasing power of consumers so it affects consumers in terms of individual in terms of households and in terms of manufacturers so inflation is really an economic problem and it affects the economy in real terms and that is why it is of concern uh, to economists to policymakers and uh, other uh, nigerians so it has a debilitating effect on the economy. It affects consumption of goods and services. It affects consumption, it affects production of goods and services, and it also has effects on the general employment level. Okay, the, uh, the, sorry, the drop in inflation, what direct impact does it have on the economy, the drop in inflation? Well, recently, based on the uh, statistics released by the National Bureau of Statistics. We've seen that the, the headline inflation has cooled for the first time in almost two, two uh, in almost uh, you know a year now. Uh, the inflation rate has decreased to 33.40 percent in July, compared to uh, uh, 
compared to 2023? Uh, no, no. In, no, no. For the first time, it actually cooled down, reduced to 33.40% in July. Okay. But it still remained high. Uh, uh, so it is of, of, of concern. But it is interesting to note that uh, uh, in, in June, it was actually 34.19%. Mm -hmm. But uh, in July, it dropped to 33.40%. Uh, but uh, we can still see that it is all, uh, it's still on the high side in the sense that uh, uh, due to a number of factors, uh, consumers, households are finding it easy, uh, finding it not easy to actually purchase goods and services for consumption. So this, this slight drop, Will it have any impact on the economy, the slight drop? Yeah, the slight drop is expected to moderate the inflationary trend. But uh, the, 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 the issue is that uh, this drop is, 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 is very minimal compared to the poverty situation in the country. Uh, it is very difficult to say if it will have a a positive, you know, a, a tremendous effect on the economy for now, because inflation has been on the rise, the tra trajectory has been there for more than a year now. So a little drop from, you know, 34.19 percent to 33.40 percent would not make a, you know, great impact on the economy. So more, more hands needs to be on deck for things for for us to really see the impact on the Nigerian economy. Well, for us to see the impact of uh, a, a decline in inflation, government really needs to put in place, uh, have, have to address the underlying reasons for the increase, underlying, okay. you know, the reasons for the increase. increasing inflationary trend in the economy. For example, in, in, in we, we all know that the basis, the main factors that brought about inflation in this country are one, the removal of subsidy, two, the hike in electricity prices, electricity rates, you know, and then the devaluation of the currency. These are the major things. And we also know that the level of insecurity in the country is of concern to everybody. And inflation, Nigerian inflation to a large extent is driven by the, you know, has, has remained high because of the food content, you know, the food and non-alcoholic beverages continue to be the biggest contributor to inflation in this country. The food and non-alcoholic beverages continue to be the largest contributor. So if you want inflation to come down, we have to provide security so that farmers can go back to the farm. All right. So, um, would you say the oil industry is the major reason for the stagnation of the rise in inflation? Well, uh, we know that the oil and gas, you know, continue to be the major area of foreign exchange for this country. But the contribution of the oil and or the oil industry, oil sector, is minimal compared to the contribution of the agricultural sector to the GDP. So it's not a matter of the oil and gas sector, but we have to see the components, the major contributors to the GDP. And the major contributor to the GDP is the agricultural sector. So we have to build reforms around boosting production of goods and services, especially in the agricultural sector. So farmers need to be encouraged. There should be security. There should be provision of farm inputs. It's not about only tractors, tractors, tractors in this country. What about fertilizer? Farmers need fertilizer now. Go to the far, uh, go to the markets. Fertilizer, a bag of fertilizer is between forty-two to forty-three thousand naira. So how can the ordinary farmer, which constitutes the bulk of you know the farming population, have access to fertilizer? So as a government, I think our government should you know, find a means of working with farmers, real genuine farmers, smallholder farmers, and then the commercial farmers provide farm inputs. 
we have to increase the productive base of the economy uh, in order to cough uh, inflation. The central bank has been trying with contractionary monetary policy, increasing the monetary policy rate almost every quarter. But it's not providing the required results. We have to work on production. Production, production is the key to controlling inflation in this country. So you are saying to control inflation, the economy needs to be diversified. We should not only depend on oil. Yes. We should just we should also involve agriculture. Yes, we should diversify. The government needs to diversify the economy. You know, increase the productive base, especially of the agricultural sector. The agricultural sector, uh, you know, employs huge percentage of the population. You know, and so, I, I, um, time, so, so, so we need to diversify the economy. The economy. So going yeah. back to inflation in 2023, there was, although inf inf inflation has been the topic for some years now, yes. in 2023, it became outrageous when it rose to 20 to 23%. Then yes. in 2024, it became very alarming that the people, even working class people can no longer afford three square meals. What will be the future for Nigerians? What will be the future of the inflation? Will it continue to rise or should we hope on the decrease in inflation as it has already started? Well, uh, it's not about hope. Uh, it's about putting in place policies, implementing policies that will turn around the economy of this country. And Economists have argued that government has business of turning around the economy, working with the private sector. So it is very important that our reform agenda should have a human base. As government, we need to work with the farmers, work with farmers and then improve the productive base of this economy and production in the agricultural sector in the manufacturing sector has the you know ability to turn around the economy and then bring down inflation when there is production of goods and services you know people will be employed and when people are employed then the disposable income of the consumers will go up so they will have the ability of buying goods and services to consume as individuals, as households. And this will have a multiplier effect on the economy. So the, we are talking about diversification. We are talking about increasing the productive base. Policies that will encourage people to produce in the agricultural sector, in the manufacturing sector, should be put in place. Interest rate should through the central bank be moderated so that those that need capital to invest can have access to capital through the banking system at affordable rates so that people can invest in agriculture, people can invest in manufacturing, the small scale industries. Once this industrial, uh, you know, the productive base is improved upon, then inflation will be moderated and that is the way to go as we have seen in other other countries so the government needs to work with the private sectors and they also need to increase productive base by making these rules and regulations very friendly for people that want to be involved in especially agriculture yes yes that is the way to go yeah so let's talk about the consistent borrowing of funds by the nigerian government can the nigerian government cut down the rate of borrowing and create jobs and industries to boost the um, gross domestic products of nigeria must nigeria borrow as a nation well uh it is pertinent to note that uh in principle there is nothing wrong in borrowing okay. uh countries borrow. Both developed and developing countries borrow in order to finance uh, infrastructural development. And we also need to understand that as a government, 
uh, Nigeria has been consistently running a deficit budget. An expansionary uh, budget has been implemented over the years. So we have budget deficit that needs to be financed. And for government, there are two or three or four, depending on the policy of the government, uh, means of financing the budget deficit. One is, is through borrowing. This borrowing, uh, either from external and it can be external borrowing and then internal borrowing. Then there is also, uh, in some countries or even in these countries, uh, privatization proceeds are also used to finance the budget. So because we have been consistently running a deficit budget, there is a need to, you know, borrow to finance the budget, the gap created. There is need to so, consistently borrow because as, yes. it, as it is now, Nigeria yes. is consistently borrowing. Yes, consistently borrowing because we've been consistently running a deficit budget. And, and we have to also note that uh, as a government, uh, like I said, there's nothing wrong in borrowing, but what do you do with the borrowed funds? Are you borrowing in order to finance infrastructural development that will pay back in the no distant future? Or we are borrowing for conspicuous consumption? So this is the so issue. So the, the, the um, Nigerian assets that were, that were seized by the Ch Chinese, should yeah. we look forward to another borrowing for them to fix it and bring them back to the country? Because well, that's, that's what they always do. They always borrow to to cover up their acts. Well, uh, the, the, the the issue is that uh, it is it's really you know funny that uh, we have gone to such a such an accent. Otherwise, uh, we if we have been consistently servicing our debts, meeting our financial obligations, we will not be in a situation uh, an embarrassing situation in which our presidential debts are. Uh, you know, cut it away because we have failed in, you know, meeting our contractual agreements for contractual obligations. But as a government, I think the government needs to find an ingenious way of, you know, meeting, you know, sitting down and then renegotiating so that we get back our presidential fleets. But by and large, borrowing is not the wrong idea, but such borrowings must be based on the national debt management framework approved by the government. Uh, so there must be, uh, you know, a responsibility in borrowing so that we borrow for productive investment. There's nothing wrong okay, in yes, borrowing. Yes, borrowing for productive investment. Yeah. Borrowing, productive borrowing is not a bad idea, but this money that they are borrowing, are they using it to grow the country or they are using it to grow their personal accounts? Because we are not seeing the impact of this money that they are borrowing. They are borrowing money. Maybe they will say they want to use it to do this, to do that. But at the end of the day, we don't see anything that they are doing. And paying back the loan, the borrowed money, it's, it's another big problem. Leading to an, um, other countries seizing our personal properties, which is a very bad name for the country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, uh, you know for, each, for, for, for any borrowing to take place, it has to be approved by, uh, in the case of the federal government, it has to be approved by the National Assembly. Uh, it has to be presented as part of the medium-term expenditure framework and then the borrowing, uh, uh, borrowing plan of the government. Now, so it's, it's the responsibility of the, of the National Assembly being our representatives to actually sit up and then play their, their oversight role as part of them. Uh, so that any amount that is borrowed should be tied to a project, project financing, so that, uh, and then through the appropriate oversight of the National Assembly and the civil so society organization, civil society, uh, you know, monitor the effective utilization of uh, borrowed funds. It is really, really important that our civil society organizations uh, to play this very important role uh, and then the National Assembly to also play that key oversight function so that collectively uh, we are sure of uh, you know, what is the amounts that are borrowed and then what is being done with the borrowed fund. And additionally, the debt management office has you know, an annual uh, 
uh, payment plan for all our existing loans. So the National Assembly Civil Society must ensure that all debts borrowed, you know, are paid as at when due. Adequate budgetary provisions are made for the servicing of the loans. So that we okay, don't so end as up, an, you know, being embarrassed. As an, as an economist, as an economist, how do you describe the state of Nigeria at the moment and what should be the way forward? What do you think should be the way forward? Well, I think uh, we are in a very uh, difficult period in the sense that uh, when this government came in, uh, there is a price pressure. Uh, inflation started you know moving highway to the south uh, due to the decision of this present administration it was a reform actually that was aimed at lifting economic growth and shoring up public finances but unfortunately these reforms have sent inflation soaring and then income you know people's income actually being eroded Okay. Now, the for me, what I can recommend is that government should put in place concrete measures of turning around the economy in the sense that uh, there is a need to prioritize, you know, certain sectors of the economy. Identify the sectors that contribute, you know, the highest proportion to the gross domestic product of this country. All right, okay. And then prioritize them. For example, we have to work on energy, on the energy sector. Electricity, for example. It is shameful that we are still at this stage when our contemporaries have gone ahead you know, in meeting their electricity, energy needs. Okay. So it is very important that uh, we improve generation and distribution of electricity because electricity as an energy source has effect on the most of the productive economy, uh, productive sectors of this economy. Yes, the small yes. scale industries, which are, which are regarded as the engine of growth cannot operate effectively without electrics, electricity. You know, these small artisans, uh, uh, businesses, welding, you know, barbing, you know, eateries, schools, name them, you know, and they employed huge populations of this country. Okay. So let's work on electricity. All right. As a government, prioritize electricity, prioritize security of life and property. Okay. All right. Thank you. Electricity, security, and maybe the oil industry and agriculture. Yeah. Increase transparency and accountability in the oil sector. All right. And then improve agricultural production through the provision of farm inputs required by farmers at affordable rates not free but at affordable, affordable rates. rates all right thank yeah. you very much for joining us on the program dr sheikh alhaji maidugu mni lecturer of economists and um, lecturer of lecturer university of base department of economics thank you for joining us thank you for having me and um that will be the size of our program for today thank you for watching i am idris amina bye for now